See what Gachagua has a lot of lifelines uh, after this impeachment. The first lifeline is this: the MPs impeach Gachagua with no impeachable offenses. Let me say that if you look at the allegations of oh, fraud, what you know, if you talk about the issue which are criminal, Gachagua is not like the president who is a, who is who cannot be tried while in office. I don't want to say about the law. Gachagua is not like the president who cannot be tried while in office. Gachagua could have just been tried by the, the court. They could have just taken him to court for those fraud cases because a fraud case can be tried in court and then the court can pronounce themselves. They were not supposed to be impeached. So if he goes to court with some con concrete evidence between now and when the Senate should impeach him, actually, the court has powers to stop the Senate from trying Gachagua and therefore fail to remove him from office. Of course, you know very well that money is moving around. I don't know who is receiving money. I don't know who is in court. I don't know who are these judges who will be received or the Senate. If that fails, Gachagua can just let himself to be, uh, to have a chance in the Senate and try to explain to the senators because he will have to appear before the Senate. The Senate cannot investigate him and doesn't appear. He has to appear and actually explain himself. Second, Liga Chagua has another thing in the name of public participation. The public participation which was done was very shambolic because a public participation done properly should be that people took the petition, I know the parliament, MPs are supposed to take the petition to the people of the sovereign power to interrogate the accusations or the petition they have against Gachagua but also they were equally to take Gachagua's responses to the accusations because in a court of law, just like court of public opinion, you have to hear both sides. So these people did a one-sided, uh, let's say, public participation by just talking about why they want to impeach Gachagua without having a, another paper printed or document printed showing we accuse Gachagua of A and he has said B Therefore, we conclude that he's still guilty. That was not there. And then the public went with one voice, impeach both of them. So then the MPs must be asked, to what extent have they considered the people's cry, Kufa Makanga, Kufa Dry, wherever? To what extent have they factored in that? The other argument Gachagua has is that uh, the presidential ticket between William Ruto and Gachagua it, is, it was a ticket that for William Ruto to qualify to run for president, um, he had to nominate a deputy. So Gachagua can argue, because there is no precedence of having impeached a deputy president, that it's either they fall together or they stand together. And the citizen says, Kufa Makanga, Kufa Driver. Therefore, Gachaga can argue, if the court finds an interpretation, to be able to uphold, uh, to, to, to dismiss or squash the impeachment from parliament, Gachaga has a chance. Remember, if you want to know how trick it is for, for these things of uh, uh, impeaching Gachaga while leaving Ruto, it is very clear that Gachaga and Ruto were elected in the ballot using universal suffrage. Universal suffrage is whereby every Kenyan has a chance to vote for or against the two. As they left Raila Odinga and Martha Karua. Now, you can only impeach Gachagua through universal suffrage because if I come in through universal suffrage, why do you move me through parliament? Parliament are elected representatives and according to us Kenyans, parliament lost legitimacy long before Long before 25th of June, we just came to Parliament on 25th of June to confirm that Parliament is made of pigs, call them MPs, is a place of monkeys, is a place of horse trading, is not a place that represents Kenya. So with that argument, court can squash the impeachment from Parliament and stop Senate from trying him. If he fails, he can allow Senate to try him. And I think what Kachaga is now fearing is that He's not fearing losing the deputy president. That one he has lost already. In fact, he does, he does not even desire working in Ruto's government. That one is clear. He wants to go. But he wants to be given a chance to contest for elective posts because 
In as much as Gachaga might have a lot of political capital, just like Sonko has, just like Babayo has, if you cannot run for office, it's like you're a bull that has been castrated. So to remove this castration, Gachaga can allow himself to be impeached by uh, uh, parliament, removed from office by the Senate, then eventually uh, go to court, even if the court, uh, or the, 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 the Senate and Parliament will replace Gachagua by whoever they want to replace, he can still go to court and ensure the court declares that he was wrongfully removed and impeached from office, and therefore he can contest, and then now he can get this chance to go to the ground, talk to the people who support him, and tell them, this MP betrayed me, that one betrayed me, Ruto betrayed me, and sell the betrayal Naga's narrative, and get sympathy. You know, there are two things that you have to be very careful about. Politics of tribalism and sympathy. When they come, because if you say Ruto removed him because Ruto was from Rift Valley, uh, Rift Valley people have always had issues with Mount Kenya people, if you like the Kikuyu. Bring in the issue of the post-election violence, how people are killed in Kiamba, all those things. And with that tribal emotion and the rest of it, it might work his way. Of course, I know that Mount Kenya people don't care too much about Gachagua because Gachagua discussion is not the center, it's not at the epicenter of Mount Kenya discussion. But Gachagua is their son. You, even if your son is mad, you can't leave them to suffer. Even if my father is already old and is, is urinating in the trouser, if you abuse him, I'll still be annoyed. So I don't expect Mount Kenya to really drop their son. Uh, but I don't think that uh, Mount Kenya will be more concerned about the popularity of Gachagua as opposed to meritocracy because Mount Kenya might be looking for somebody with merit, much more merit than Gachagua, who can take the mantle and show that Mount Kenya has given birth to brilliant, uh, best and brightest in Mount Kenya. I'm sure that is the case. So for this matter, uh, Gachagua can take this route and still have his political lifeline and be able to be a defining, uh, let's say, personality in the next election which is coming. I want to explain to you why, uh, in as much as Ruto has succeeded to impeach Gachagua through parliament, he has gotten what he has asked for, but also he has complicated his own political arithmetic. Um, Yesterday we were saying, what if he impeached him, but now he has actually done it. So first of all, he has, say, he has demonstrated to everybody that he's capable of betrayal, just like he accused uh, Uhuru Kenyatta of. So any other person coming or any other committee coming to the, to the table, they know there's a chance Ruto can remove the knife and cut. Uhuru failed to remove the knife. Uhuru kept the knife uh, in its own uh, place and never removed the knife to cut. So, Uhuru left the presidency showing he's incapable of betrayal as he was uh, being bet uh, shown by uh, Ruto. But now, we have to understand Ruto is a tribal kingpin. Ruto plays tribal arithmetics. And therefore, what is going to happen after impeaching Gachagua is that he has to find a way to e equalize and bring equilibrium in his uh, tribal, let's say, arithmetic. That's why, you know, he gave Mount Kenya over 13 uh, CSS um, and the, the likes and Gachago was the vice president. So those are 14 very powerful positions from Mount Kenya. So what way Mount Kenya, for example? So Mount Kenya, what could he do to bring the equilibrium? One is just go for Mount Kenya West to prove that he's still standing with Mount Kenya West and ignore the east where Kindiki comes from. But what is happening is that whether Ruto takes Mount Kenya West leader and makes them become the deputy president, the mountain turned already, and the mountain will not turn back to William Ruto. They don't like him. And that's why you say in the beginning, before trying to impeach Gachagua, Ruto tried to go to Mount Kenya himself, and the insults were too many, the oppositions were too much, the fights were too many, so he gave it up. The other option just to make the things look neutral and to, to try to divide Mount Kenya, he could actually go for Kindiki to avoid now the challenges. Because, for example, Mount Kenya West has this problem. If, he's, if Ruto dares to give a deputy president for, to somebody, for example, Ichungwa, 
Ndindi uh, Nyoro, or any other elected leaders from Mount Kenya now, that seat will be lost because Mount Kenya will prove to Ruto that UDA cannot win any other seat in Mount Kenya after the betrayal he has done with Gachagua. But not just that. The economic sabotage he has given to Mount Kenya. Mount Kenya cares about the economic sabotage more than impeaching Gachagua. Remember that uh, Mount Kenya just want to feed their families. They want to become industrious people. They are hardworking people. They are very productive people. So they want to focus on the productivity side of their life. So they do not care about all these stories. So after that, it will be very tricky for him. So he has to go maybe to Mount Kenya East and pick the likes of Kindiki, who will just hold the position for the remaining three years. And then, you know, his de facto running mate is Musali Abdabek. So that's another arithmetic. The other arithmetic is that now, Guru can say another scenario. Let me just bite the bullet. Ignore Mount Kenya because they have left me. And go straight after Musalem Davadi and make him deputy president. And maybe get someone from Mount Kenya to take the position of Musalem Davadi. Of course, Mount Kenya would have felt they have been given the third position rather than the second position. But this will give uh, Musalem Davadi time to consolidate Mount Kenya, uh, Western Kenya and maybe bring these votes to William Ruto. But that brings another complexity. The complexity is that Moses Wetangula is from Western Kenya. He's the Speaker of the National Assembly, third in command. Will it be reasonable to have um, a deputy president from the same region where we have the Speaker? So that will be tricky. At the same time, they are thinking that Moses Wetangula now has to join UDA or ODM and kill for the Kenya. So Moses Wetangula will feel like the powers that is in Western Kenya are becoming more powerful for him. So he might lose Moses Wetangula. And you know Moses Wetangula had been meeting with Gachagua before. What if Moses Wetangula joins Gachagua and then they bring it on on William Ruto? How likely can William Ruto win an election with Wetangula who has left? And uh, Eugene Wamalwa who actually is on the other side. So he has lost the Bukusu, Bungoma is gone. Without the votes from Bungoma, William Ruto cannot be sworn in as president. So this arithmetic will become very complicated for William Ruto. And if he does not know how to play them, because that's the only politics William Ruto understands, William Ruto is completely finished. Thank you. First of all, Gachagua's uh, strategy towards impeachment was poor because he called the press statements to really talk to the, to the common modern Kenyans. What is his case? Because this was a... Uh, he was actually in the public op opinion court. And uh, the kind of information he was offering, the public cannot consume. Like uh, all those listing of companies, complex uh, uh, transactions being done, the normal Mwanaishi wouldn't really even bother. The Gachagua exposed himself twice. He came to say, I am as clean as ice or snow. Mweipe kama pampa, kama pampa. But uh, he explained that part, but also gave evidence how guilty he is, because it was like, oh, the land I have is for my brother who died. Oh, the companies that I'm running that are doing businesses belong to my sons. Oh, the money I have has been made by my wife. Uh, so if you, if the money being accused, you are being accused to have made money, you reveal they belong to your wife. Money from, from your wife is your money. And then when he said that uh, his sons took a loan of 600 million shillings to set up the businesses that they are running. Let me ask you, I'm a banker. 600 million shillings, to get 600 million shillings need a collateral of around 2.1 billion. How can those kids get such a collateral? It, it's, it's, it's totally impossible. If you want to get line of credit, call LC, line of credit from the bank, even to do business, you need to have a collateral of around 2.1 billion. Where did they get them? And the businesses that the children were doing, if at all they were doing business, how could they do them without his state influence of being a device, a deputy president? So totally, he, he, he had a wrong strategy to defend himself. He could have just looked like a victim of circumstances, there was no need of wasting time about discussing the details about his companies exposing himself. He could have just gone to say the broken relationship they have between him and the, and the, and the president. And the, the issue was that 
what he mentioned in the end, which excited Kenyans, was uh, when Kenyans said Tobo Ayote, was about the Adani deal, was about the shifts come, was about the university funding model, was about the privatization, was about the finance bill. If he spent time telling Kenyans why they were at loggerheads with this boss because of his stance on those matters, uh, abductions, uh, unlawful arrests, uh, killings, maiming, if he spent time there, for sure Gachaga could have won the day and could have won the head and the hearts of the public. But he spent time discussing that issues. Um, you, business is not illegal to do business in Kenya. Everybody is entitled to do business. And the discussing about it was not relevant to anybody. And I believe Gachaga just wasted the chance uh, to, to demonstrate. But nevertheless, Gachagwa had a trial before trial. He gave the MPs uh, fuel for fire to roast him. And they didn't take it, uh, they didn't waste time. They took it up and brought it to him. But uh, also Gachagwa's day yesterday was very interesting when he did the shareholding things um, and uh, with the documentation, with evidence, and they gave MPs a chance to look a little stupid and also just to look like they were only emotional trying to impeach him. And also he gave the chance to the people who would betray him to betray him. I'm sure the people who never, who really feared to betray him but wanted Ruto's money uh, were at a very difficult situation. And he gave them a chance to betray him, including the person whom he helped negotiate a wedding for. The MPs, he gave money. Uh, Gachagawa helped so many MPs to get elected in Mount Kenya, truth be said. Uh, I was actually with one of them called Kawanjiku. Kawanjiku told me that he was the first UDA MP and Gachagwa used to walk from home to home with him. And Gachagwa used to give very strong influences, money in Kiamba that made him be elected. So, truth be said, Gachagwa produced the first UDA MP in the name of Kawanjiku. And he, he deserves a bit of some loyalty from them. Because politics is loyalty 100%. Um, General Kajuang said it, that we reward only loyalty. So the, the fact that the MPs that uh, Gachagwa stood with could not reward him with the same loyalty uh, says a lot. Thank you.